In our last video, we photographed the small Magellanic cloud, the smaller of our two satellite galaxies. Today, we will photograph the second and the larger one. Hello, welcome to the Astronomina's channel. I am Fabio and today we will photograph the Large Magellanic Cloud. As the small cloud, the Large Magellanic Cloud was also named after the Portuguese navigator Fernão de Magalhães adventure around the Earth. The Large Magellanic Cloud has an apparent magnitude of 0.9, which makes it easily observable with the naked eye, and it is also a dwarf irregular galaxy with a diameter of about 14,000 light years, which makes it the fourth largest galaxy in the local group. The LMC is situated even closer to Earth, at about 165,000 light years away. The most recent studies suggest that it was once a buried spiral galaxy, which was undone by the influence of the Milky Way. As most regular galaxies, it is rich in gas and dust, making it the perfect place to host regions of intense star formation, such as the Tarantula Nebula, the most active star-forming region of the local group of galaxies. As I mentioned in the previous video, the two Magellanic clouds are easily photographed with DSLR cameras and lenses. To fully frame the LMC, I will use the Canon 2000D with the EF 50mm f1.8 STM lens, mounted on the Star Adventure Mini, which will monitor and also serve as an intervalometer for the captures. I will capture as many subframes of 60 seconds as possible, with ISO 8000, which is the setting with the best signal to noise radio for this camera. Although the EF 50mm lens has an aperture of f1.8, I will reduce it to f2.8, which makes the shape and color of the stars better, without many chromatic and optical aberrations in the center of the apparent field of view. This weekend the LMC reached its highest position, which is 43 degrees of altitude at 9 and 30 pm. I will also take the opportunity to photograph the Tarantula Nebula with the Sky Rover 60 Super ED. Cataloged as NGC 2070, the Tarantula Nebula is about 650 light years in diameter, and like the Orion Nebula, is an extremely luminous object to photograph, although it has an apparent magnitude of 8. As it is an object that is somewhat modest for the field of view of the ASI 183MC Pro, I will try to take the longest integration time to achieve the highest definition possible, since the typical summer winter here in my region is quite unpredictable during the nights, after the mid-afternoon storms. Each subframe will have two minutes, with the camera again F1500, and again the mount will descend towards the horizon. Although the nights were clear with little cloud circulation, the relative humidity of the air was quite high during the entire weekend, which slightly impaired the sharpness of the two images. To be honest, I didn't count how many frames were dropped by passing clouds, but there were a lot. In the end, I got 84 minutes of total integration time with the Canon 2000D and the EF 50mm lens and 64 minutes with the ASI 183MC Pro 
and the Sky Rover 60 Super ED. Until the usual early morning, fog prevented any capture attempts. Despite all of this, I confess that the image resulting in the Tarantula Nebula impressed me a lot. In the close-up image, it is possible to not see small halos around the stars, but it is possible to clearly observe the contours of the gas and dust clouds in the center of the nebula. This we can definitely prove that even without the right conditions, it is possible to do a good job. I just believe it and was patient. I hope you like the final images of this weekend. I wish you all clear skies and see you soon.